let's look into the behind-the-scenes magic that turns raw materials into the stuff we use every day. Pencils. Pencils, those trusty writing tools, are made through an amazing process. They start as bits of wood, graphite, clay, and paint. First, the wood gets cut into thin slats, and then little grooves are carefully carved into them. Meanwhile, graphite and clay get mixed and baked until they become slender rods. These rods snugly fit into the grooves on the wooden slats, creating the core of the pencil. A colorful coat of paint finishes the job after the slats are glued together, and ta-da! You have a pencil ready for scribbling and drawing. Did you know an average pencil can draw a line as long as 35 miles? That's enough to write about 40,000 words. Ketchup. Ah, good old tomato ketchup. The favorite condiment of many. The recipe might be a bit different considering the production companies that manufacture them, but it always includes tomato paste, sweeteners, spices, salt, vinegar, and onion powder. Tomato paste takes the lead in this saucy adventure. It's pumped into a big tank, getting ready to be cooked. Depending on how much ketchup we're making, the right amount of paste is poured into a cooking pot, where it's heated and stirred up well. The other ingredients join the party in just the right amount, all dancing together in the pot. They cook, mix, and become the tasty ketchup we love. Before heading into bottles, our ketchup cools down slowly. At the same time, bottles are lined up, all set to hold our tangy treasure. The ketchup flows into the bottles, usually through an automated machine. Caps on, labels are slapped on, and there you have it. Bottles of ketchup are ready to be sent out to make your fries and burgers extra delicious. Glasses. Glasses are super important for people with terrible vision. But have you ever wondered how they are made? It all starts with three simple things. Sand, soda ash, and limestone. These three main ingredients get thrown into a hot furnace, where they melt together and become molten glass. After that, the glasses become shaped into different sizes and shapes for different types of glasses. They cool it down carefully, cut it just right, and give it a finishing touch. Sometimes coating is added to make it scratch-resistant or stop annoying reflections. Then the glasses are put into frames made of metal or plastic. Fun fact! The first glasses, called spectacles, were made in Italy in the 13th century and were worn by mostly monks and scholars. Mineral wool. This wool is super handy and is used in all sorts of industries. They make it from big chunks of slag and rock by heating and spinning them until they turn into thread-like things. They usually get these chunks from the steel industry and they use coke to make the magic happen. First, they crush the rock and slag a bit and alternately layer them with coke in a special oven called a cupola. The coke burns hot, heating everything to extreme temperatures like 2400 to 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. When it's all hot and gooey, the molten rock goes from the cupola to a fiberizing machine that turns it into threads. There are two ways to do this, one with high-speed rotors that spin fast, and the other using a spinning thing that's kind of like how they make cotton candy. After that, they add a binder to hold it all together and use a pendulating device to drop the wool onto sheets in a zig zigzag pattern. They do this a few times to make it thicker or thinner depending on what you need. Then they squish the wool down with rollers, heat it again to set the binder, roll it some more, trim it, and cut it into pieces. It's a pretty amazing process to watch. Lipsticks. Lipsticks are a go-to choice for many women, but have you ever wondered how they are made? It all starts by mixing wax, oil, pigment, and fragrance. They warm it up at low temperature, and it turns into a smooth paste. Then they pour this warm paste into molds shaped like lipsticks. After a cool down in the molds, out come the fresh lipsticks. They wrap them up on paper and put them in their holders. Finally, they add labels and the lipsticks are ready to be sold. Surprisingly, lipsticks have been around since ancient times, made from crushed bugs and plants. They were symbols of beauty and status for the ancient Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans. Compact discs. While CDs aren't as popular as they used to be, they still have their charm. Except for the main copy, most of a CD is made of polycarbonate plastic, about 99%. The other 1% is a reflective layer. They start with a molten plastic to make the physical disc. If there's digital stuff to put on it, they stamp it onto the disc when it's almost melting. This stamping makes tiny bumps and dips called pits and lands that hold the digital information. Once the data is stamped, they add a layer that reflects light on the player, usually made of aluminum, but sometimes with fancier stuff like silver, gold, or platinum. This layer helps the CD player's laser read the information. To finish up, they put a thin lacquer coat over the reflective layer to protect it from rust, but it's pretty fragile and won't save the CD from physical damage. Suitcases For travelers who want smooth journeys, suitcases are a must-have. But do you ever think about how they're made? It all starts with plastic, metal, fabric, and zippers. They shape the plastic into suitcase shells using special special suitcase-shaped molds. These shells get trimmed and holes are added for handles and wheels. Metal is bent and cut into rods for the suitcase's frame. The fabric is cut and stitched to make linings and pockets inside the suitcase. The zipper is sewn into the fabric to open and close the suitcase. Skilled workers put all these parts together using screws and glue to make sure everything stays in place. 
They test the suitcase to make sure it's tough before it goes to the stores. Surprisingly, the first suitcases were made of wood or leather and didn't have handy things like wheels and handles. They were called trunks and were used by affluent travelers in the past, especially those who traveled by trains or ships. Car tires. Ever wondered how they make car tires? Well, it's quite a multi-stage process. They use about 15 different things like natural rubber, synthetic rubber, some chemicals, and black pigment. All these ingredients are mixed up in massive machines that are super hot and pressurized. After this, they're rolled into a nice, rubbery sheet. Then they start putting the tire together using a tire-building machine. They use cloth, metal, and rubber parts to make the tire's wall, treads, and skeleton. The last step is curing the tire, kind of like baking it. They heat it to more than 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit for around 12 to 15 minutes. This makes everything stick together and toughens up the rubber so it can handle the road. Ice cream. Ice cream is a treat loved by everyone, and making it is pretty cool too. It starts with a mix of milk, cream, sugar, and flavors. These ingredients have undergone processes like pasteurization and homogenization to make them smooth and safe to eat. Then they put it in a freezer and kept churning it to make it fluffy and avoid those pesky ice crystals. After that, they whip it to make it extra creamy. Finally, they put it in containers or cones and get it ready for you to enjoy. Surprisingly, ice cream dates way back in time, when folks made it from snow or ice mixed with fruit or honey. People argue about who invented it, the ancient Chinese, Persians, or Romans. Darts. Making darts is all about old school craftsmanship. First, they make the flight shafts. They take long aluminum rods and cut them into smaller shafts with threads at one end for the dart barrel. Then they use a cross saw to carve slots at the other end for the arrow flights. They use lots of oil to keep things smooth. Next, it's the brass rod's turn. They go through a machine that shapes them into the surface for a good grip. Some people prefer tungsten darts because they can make thinner sections for better accuracy. Darts are a mix of traditional and modern choices where precision matters most. The last step is to push a sharp piece of steel into the dart's hollow part using a powerful hydraulic press. After this crucial step, they put all the dart parts together and attach the flights. And just like that, a finely crafted dart is born, all set to hit its target. Marbles. Marbles, those little treasures we love from our childhood, are made through an amazing process. While old marbles used to be made of clay or stone, most modern ones are made of glass. It starts with melting down recycled glass and old marble, even the ones that were too big or too small. They heat this mix in an oven or kiln for about 16 hours, and it turns into molten glass. Next, they use a cutter bar to cut the flowing molten glass every half a second, making small pieces called slugs. These slugs are going to become marbles, and the size of the marble depends on how fast they cut. Faster for small marbles, and slower for big ones. While the slugs are still hot, they roll them through metal ridged rollers that spin all the time. This cools them down and makes them round. The patterns and colors on the marbles were set while they were in the oven, with air passing through the molten glass, leaving unique designs. Once they've cooled and hardened, they sort the marbles by size. Some marbles with special designs are made by skilled people. Each one is unique and handcrafted. Latex gloves. You've probably seen latex gloves everywhere, but do you know how they're made? It's a mix of old farming methods and modern technology. It all starts by getting latex from rubber trees found in places like Vietnam, Thailand, and Indonesia. The latex is tapped from the heavier Brasiliensis tree. First, they clean and prepare molds for the gloves, which might look a bit weird, as you can see in this video. Latex gloves aren't pure latex. They are different additives to make them stretchy and last longer. They dip the cleaned molds into the latex mix for a while, depending on how thick they want the gloves. After that, they heat them to stop them from cracking when they dry. Once that's done, they wash off the extra latex from the gloves to avoid allergies. Then they make the edges of the gloves easier to put on. Depending on what's preferred, they might add powder, often cornstarch, or do chlorination to make the gloves less sticky. Workers take the gloves off the molds by hand and check them for quality. After that, they pack them up and send them out for shipping. And there you have it! If you want to see more videos like this, click on the cards on the screen. And as always, keep exploring!